And next we have Casey Addy with BLM at the Utah State Office. So I'm Casey Addy, <clears throat> excuse me, I am the uh, Terrestrial Monitoring Lead and ESR Lead for BLM in Utah. Um, my co-presenter, Daniel Olson, with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources couldn't be here, unfortunately, um, so I'll do my best to uh, get through his part of the talk here. So the first thing I want to talk about is the Utah Migration, uh, Wildlife Migration Initiative. It was established in 2017 and it was kind of directed to get more information on aquatic and terrestrial wildlife in Utah and their migration patterns throughout the state. <clears throat> As you can see, there's a lot of uh, different projects going on all over the state with these uh, GPS collars. <clears throat> in 2018, the Department of the Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke signed Order uh, 3362, which directed federal agencies to start working directly with states on these migration initiatives. Um, BLM Utah has provided the state of Utah in the last few years $900,000 towards this effort. Um, a lot of other non-governmental organization partner groups are also involved with this and have donated a pretty significant amount of money as well. Um, of the $900,000 that we've provided to the DWR, we've um, spent that money on capturing a lot of animals, buying a lot of GPS collars, 500 actually, um, and funding some university studies on fawning and migration and uh, analysis of GPS data. So here we have a map of this is real time GPS data of a mountain lion that was collared in very northern Utah. As you can see, its range is pretty significant. Um, this is also some deer that were colored in northern Utah and, and uh, kind of shows, you know, what's going on with this GPS data as we, as we use it. Um, I feel like it's pretty neat. So I'm going to switch gears and start kind of talking about vegetation monitoring. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about Utah's uh, DWR's range trend monitoring. Um, they have a bunch of plots all over uh, Utah and it's an um, effort that's been going on for somewhere around 30 years. They have a suite of indicators they look at. Um, so in Utah we also have the BLMA monitoring, which are the dark green dots on the map, and the NRCS landscape monitoring framework monitoring, which are the light green dots on the map, and then we have aquatic aim, which are the blue dots, but I'm not going to talk about that today. <clears throat> so AIM and LMF, if you're not familiar with it, uses a suite of indicators that are scalable across multiple uh, landscapes. You can kind of scale these down and, and look at these indicators on different scales to evaluate different areas and for different things. Um, in Utah, this is kind of where we're at with the LMF and the AIM. Uh, the AIM is the dark dots and the LMF is the green dots. We actually have probably thousand more dots that are going to be on this map in the very near future from our last year's uh, data. So this is the Ponsagant Plateau in southern Utah. It's kind of part of the Grand Staircase National Monument. Um, this is kind of the area that we wanted to focus on because this is a very significant deer herd in Utah, very famous, and we have a lot of monitoring data there. So this is all our data put together into one shot. Have our, the red dots are the GPS data and then all the other dots are our monitoring data for vegetation. Uh, we wanted to focus on this area on the southern end because it's very significant for deer during November and December, those months where it's really critical. So this is a heat map with all of our monitoring uh, plots. It's kind of a low, moderate, and high uh, density deer um, heat map to kind of show where the deer are hanging out for, for long periods of time or short periods of time. So we wanted to do a habitat evaluation and we wanted to set some objectives that we wanted to combine our data sets. We wanted to um, figure out how we could increase mule deer habitat um, preference and determine how we could mitigate some of the mortality losses we have. So. This is our habitat um, with very low to low deer density. You can see the tree cover is extremely high and our herbaceous cover is extremely low. So deer just don't like that area. Uh, with the moderate deer densities, we see that our tree cover comes down and our herbaceous cover comes up pretty significantly.
And then with our high deer intensity areas, uh, the tree cover comes significantly down and our shrub and herbaceous cover rises a lot compared to the areas with low densities. And we only chose a cover indicator for this, even though there's a whole suite of indicators. Um, as far as our study area, the proportions, we have 60% in the moderate to high densities of deer and 40% in the low. And we do see some significant differences between our low densities and our high densities when it comes to vegetation. Um, BLM, we've already taken this GPS data and we've started to implement some things on the ground for mitigation. Um, we have a lot more wildlife water going on and we are actively changing our fences to be more wildlife friendly. And the Utah Division of Wildlife and Utah Department of Transportation <clears throat> are also using this data to put under highway crossings for deer in these high migration areas. And they're also uh, doing a lot of fencing work to keep the deer off of highways. And that's it. All right, who's got a question or two? You mentioned uh, the the watering improvements. Uh -huh. I'm curious about what uh, what informed those decisions and what you're learning about how they change yield deer. Well, you know, we just looked at a map and we realized that there's some areas where there's a lot of deer and we just need more water to kind of disperse those deer throughout those areas. So we've uh, went ahead and started to put some waters into those areas, drilled some wells and, and stuff like that. So the idea was to spread the deer out? A little bit, yeah, if we can. Thanks. Yep. Uh, I'm curious, are you planning your <coughs> monitoring to kind of complement the UWR monitoring so that you can get a broader picture, or have you been monitoring data sets? You bet. So she asked if we could, uh, if we we're planning on combining our efforts with our AIM monitoring and the DWR to, I guess, get better data. Is that right? Um, so yeah, we're, this is this very, um, we barely started this maybe six months ago, started talking with each other and kind of looking at the data. And as we've kind of delved into it more, we can see that there's a lot more that we need to do here. So yeah, absolutely. We're going to start combining our efforts to get better data for this particular reason. So, cool. All right, thank you. <laughs>